ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Welcome back to the Civil War Battles. Today we'll be talking about the third battle in the Civil War, the Battle of Aquia Creek. Virginia seceded from the Union on April 17, 1861, three days after the surrender of Fort Sumter to Confederate forces. Virginia Governor John Lecter gave Robert E. Lee command of the Virginia State Forces with the initial rank of Major General. General Lee will be featured prominently throughout this series. General Lee dispatched Captain William Lynch of the Virginia State Navy to review defense points on the Potomac River. The idea was to establish defensive artillery batteries to prevent Union ships from navigating the river. On April 24, 1861, Major Thomas H. Williamson of the Virginia Army Engineers and Lieutenant H. H. Lewis of the Virginia Navy arrived at Aquia Creek. There they selected the Split Rock Bluff as the best point for an artillery battery. They believed the channel there could be commanded from that point by guns of sufficient caliber. President Lincoln ordered a blockade of the Confederacy to include Virginia and North Carolina shortly thereafter. Both sides were attempting to secure the Potomac River for their own use. Major Williamson began construction of the fortifications at Aquia Creek on the beginning of May 1861. The primary goal was to protect the rail yard terminals of Fredericksburg and Potomac Railroad. The northern terminal had been secured by the Union Army by May 14, 1861, and in response, the Confederates had erected a battery of 13 guns to protect the railroad terminal at Aquia Creek. The artillery was also a threat to ships navigating the Potomac River. Brigadier General Daniel Ruggles assumed overall command of the batteries, although they did remain under the immediate command of Captain Lynch at Aquia Creek. On May 14, 1861, the USS Mount Vernon sped into the area and spotted the Confederate artillery. They performed an initial reconnaissance and returned to Fort Monroe without firing a shot. The Confederates responded to the intrusion of the Mount Vernon by constructing a second battery on the bluffs, south of Aquia Creek. On May 29th, the USS Thomas Freeborn, yes, the one from our last battle, the Battle of Sewell's Point, was, who was returning from the Sewell's Point, arrived and began to shell the artillery works. After what appeared to be no damage during the day, the Freeborn returned two days later with four vessels of the Potomac Flotilla. These vessels included the USS Anacosta, the USS Pawnee, and the USS Resolute, with, of course, the USS Thomas Freeborn. The ships exchanged fire with the artillery batteries on the shore until the ships were out of ammunition later that day. On the next day, June 1st, 1861, the Freeborn and the Pawnee returned and they sailed within 2,000 yards of the forts. Most of the Confederate artillery fired over their target and did little damage to the ships. Once again, the ships emptied their ammunition supplies into the artillery and returned to their shipyard at dusk. That night, the Confederates dug a third earthwork north of the creek at Brent's Point. It was at this point the U.S. vessel sailed away without silencing the batteries. The U.S. forces had determined that the range of the Confederate guns wasn't able to interfere with Potomac River shipping, in which case they left Aquia Point to a later battle. Well, that's it, guys. A really quick rundown of Aquia Creek. It's a pretty small battle. The resulting casualties were about 10 Confederate killed, no U.S. soldiers killed, at least not during that battle. Now, there's a couple more battles that will be coming up in the future that will be over this area. The casualties will be much greater then. I hope you'll join us for our next battle, the Battle of Big Bethel in Virginia, York County and Hampton on June 10, 1861. The world will very little note or long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here.